Okay, let's have a look at how you'd solve a problem involving percent composition. So, um, when you look at a problem involving percent composition and try to find uh, the empirical formula of this, of this compound, of the substance, um, it may at first look very different from other empirical formula problems, but in reality it really is the same thing. So, uh, to make it easy, we do this. Assume a 100 gram sample. Okay, if you have a 100 gram sample, that means that your 69.6% becomes 69.6 .6 grams of manganese, and uh, the 30.4% oxygen becomes 30.4 grams of oxygen. You can use that for your to, uh, to solve the for the answer. So, it, and by the way, this works because it doesn't matter if you have a handful or a truckload of this stuff. It's going to have the same chemical formula either way. So. 100 grams works just fine. All right, so uh, that means you take your 69.6 .6 grams of manganese and convert to moles, and convert this to moles, and then find a ratio between the two moles. So here we go, converting to moles. One mole of manganese has a molar mass of approximately 54.94 grams. Okay, uh, before doing the actual numbers, let me set up the other one also. So for the 30.4 grams of oxygen, I will also convert that to moles of oxygen with a molar mass of 16.00 grams per mole of oxygen. So this will allow me to get moles of oxygen and moles of manganese. So, that's the number of moles of magnesium, 1.26, and it, it's significant figures aren't particularly important here, so I'm just going to go out to a you know, usable place, let's see, four decimal places out feels like it'll work fine. You don't want to just do like two decimal places, you want a reasonable number of decimal places out but uh, significant figures is not such a big issue here because then you're getting a chemical formula. You're not calculating some odd decimal or something. Uh, let's see, uh, converting that nut grams to moles of oxygen. So let's see. Okay, so 1.9. Well, I guess take it out the number of decimal places. So that's moles of oxygen. And then, uh, as you always do, in order to find the ratio of the moles, I divide by the smaller of the two numbers. So this is the smaller number, so divide by 1.2668, divided by 1.2668. Let's see, well, that'll give one mole of manganese. And uh, as for the oxygen, I'll take that 1.9 and divide it, well, okay, let me make it clear what I'm doing here. Take that 1.9 divided by 1.2668, okay, the smaller the two numbers, and I get that. Now, that's a messy decimal. However, it looks very close to 1.5, so close, in fact, that it is perfectly fine to call it 1.5 moles of oxygen. All right, well, what does that leave us with? Uh, we've got a ratio initially that is uh, one manganese for every 1.5 oxygens. I only write out oxygen because if I don't it looks like a zero. Um, but at any rate, okay, well, that would imply a uh, formula of MnO 1.5, but of course, you're not allowed to do that. You can't have a formula with decimals in there, so I'll cross that out. That's a no-no. All right, instead, need to make this ratio into a whole number ratio. So let's see. If I times this by 2, will this work? 1 times 2 is 2. 1 and a half times 2 is 3. 
ah, that works. That makes it a whole number ratio. If it didn't work, I would have tried times it by four or five or six and kept going until something turned into a whole number ratio. But if I multiply by two, I get a ratio of two manganese for every three oxygen. There you go, it moved into view so you can see it. All right, well, what that means is that the empirical formula is MN2O3. Just label that up to make it clear what I'm doing. And box the answer. And that's how you go about solving one of these. Now, that being said, let's do this. Why don't you try a couple? Okay, there's a couple. Pause this video. Take a moment to work these out. In a moment, I will put up uh, the solutions. All right, you ready? Yeah, that should be a clear vision of at least the first solution. And the second solution. All right, that's it.